Okay, so I was asked the question on um, doing spiritual work, Course in Miracles, uh, the Observer, the Counseling Beliefs, but it being so ferocious, uh, the beliefs being so ferocious, uh, and it seems like the rest of the world is in a totally different place, feels like I'm in my own bubble, and uh, also karma and guilt. And wanting to be free of the ongoing physical symptoms, which have been going on for a long time. Um, so this is someone who's been is an advanced student, has done the Course of Miracles, is um, doing Dr. Hawkins, uh, the Observer, all of these things for a long time, and is getting up very, very heavy feelings uh, going on for extended periods of time. So there are some thoughts like you know wanting to be free of it um or to change it or when is it going to end and um i do identify with that um that's the so a few things to say on that if you start um one of the things to remember and bear in mind is if you want to be an advanced student what do i mean not not better but someone who wants to be free either to get to an advanced spiritual state or the highest level of enlightenment in this lifetime, that commitment, say on, on average, I think Hawkins has said, um, we have about 25 lifetimes. Uh, probably a spiritual students have had about 25 lifetimes on average. And if you want to, if you really make a commitment to, to God to be free of your stuff, uh, you may clear up to uh, around 15 lifetimes of karma in one lifetime. So you accelerate the undoing. It makes sense, you see. If I want to be free really quickly, um, if I don't want to be free, I just want to sort of drink and watch football for this lifetime. And I've been drinking and watching football for the last five lifetimes. Well, this lifetime, I'm not going to clear 15 lifetimes. My intention for this lifetime is to watch football and drink beer. So probably I'm, I'll have to handle one lifetime of karma, a few difficult patches here and there. And it, um, I might, if I'm lucky, gain five points in consciousness or I might go down, you know, uh, in consciousness. So average people are in their own world of maybe seemingly less drama. than. A, and uh, Hawkins would say, for example, look at the lives of saints. You know, they have very heavy lifetimes. Uh, going through extreme dark patches and physical illnesses and all kinds of things. And that's because they're undoing lifetimes of karma and making huge spiritual progress in, in a lifetime. Now, you know, in these past lifetimes, um, uh, a lot of these lifetimes, well, of course, in the, in the olden days, it was barbaric. You know, you just kill people, rape people, uh, slaughter people, kill your enemies that's normal so um and if you're really unlucky you might have been a leader of the gang you might be genghis khan or adolf hitler in which case the level of karmic load as soon as you decide to be spiritual um you're going to pull up these stacks of karma or guilt you know uh, and um it's not going to be undoing in one day like I'll just uh, do a day's worth of spiritual work and I'll be free of everything. To undo, like uh, being Genghis Khan or Adolf Hitler, when you get a stack of stuff you have to undo with spiritual work and intention, it's going to be more than one day. Uh, my kidney failure was like five years of, um, you know, Course in Miracles, listening to Hawkins, doing The Observer, not, you know, nonstop, very heavy work you know, asthma, uh, gout, uh, they all went within five years, but it's not like one day and they were gone. So, um, that's, you know, you just, you just keep doing the spiritual work and you're undoing it. You're letting it run without, you know, using addiction. Uh, while you're doing spiritual work, try not to drink alcohol, take drugs, eat too many donuts, um, go to sex orgies or, or whatever it is, uh, because they, um, will numb you out and mean you're not really making any spiritual progress. You know, also you're working on not indulging in resentments, fears, pride, and even as you do the Course of Miracles, not identifying or giving meaning to thoughts and uh, 
and experience. So you're letting go of all the addiction to duality uh, in the various forms, from the gross addictions to the subtle, like fears, resentments, and then even to thoughts and experience. So it, it's going to be, as you as you level up, you're going to also have to clear the, the stacks of karmas from past lifetimes. So sometimes it's not quick, you know, but you're making progress as long as you're not, you know, try not to numb out on heavy addictions like alcohol and drugs and food and try, you know, to let go of your subtle addictions to emotions, resentments, fear, guilt, and the uh, subtler ones like the thoughts, the addiction to just being in your head all the time. And various more subtle uh, addictions to duality and to to and also the ultimate one probably to the experiencer the experiencer experiencing see which is also a duality um so wanting to be free and the person did say it you know, they know that wanting to be free is a resistance you see so you've got to let go of the thought of wanting to be free you've got to allow everything to be without thoughts so having the thought running, I want to be, I want, I want it to end now. I want it to end now. It's going to take longer, and uh, it's still in a non-acceptance. You're trying to sort of manipulate the situation by wanting it to be free, soon or ever. So you you just drop that, you can cancel that thought, or just say it's meaningless. or don't uh, don't try and pick it up. Um, and um, yeah. So uh, now. Uh, in the question was mentioned the ferociousness of the beliefs. If you're not going to make much spiritual work, the ego is not very threatened. Like I'm just watching, uh, I'm going to watch football and drink beer and eat donuts for this lifetime. I don't really do spiritual work. Well, the ego is not threatened by that. So it won't necessarily, it's not threatened. Its existence is not threatened. So its hold on illusor, illusory duality and separation isn't threatened so it's not doesn't it's not under threat so it doesn't need to threaten you too much it'll be just happy if you go uh, you know if it wins and you drop a little bit in consciousness it's quite happy it wants to exist for all eternity and hopefully take you deeper into the ego so it's not going to sort of beat you up too much now if you really if you start doing things like a course in miracles you know first thing to clear your addictions with 12 step groups and then do the Course of Miracles, or even watch something like Dr. David R. Hawkins, a teacher at the highest level of enlightenment, one of the four avatars. Um, you know, once I realized that um, there's a calibration scale, which can be done with muscle testing, uh, I'd rather stick with the four avatars, uh, Buddha, Jesus Christ, Krish Krishna, or David Hawkins. He's recent, so it's good. His work hasn't been distorted over thousands of years yet. So stick to those, stick stick to the purest levels of truth. Anyway, so um, yeah, when you start doing that stuff, your ego is going to be really super threatened, and it's going to give you a hard time. Extreme feelings, extreme symptoms. It will say like, "I'm boss. Don't do this work. Back down. Uh, just have a life of football and beer." So, and probably if you'd started watching football and beer, it would start giving you an easier time of things, and let you off the hook for a little while until you're fully back in the ego. So that's why it gets ferocious. It actually doesn't, you know, if you start to see the lives of the saints, as Hawkins would say, or the avatars, um, Buddha said like his, it was like his bones were being crushed. Uh, Jesus Christ sweat blood and tears in the Garden of Gethsemane. And these are the avatars. I mean, they're not saying like it was a walk in the park. I mean, you want to defeat the ego and the collective illusions of this world, and you're going to be it's not going to be a walk in the park. There are forces from your ego. Let's call them the forces of duality or separation within your ego and from within the world that will be um, out to make sure you sabotage. So, um, yeah. So um, I guess a positive frame is if you're having a really hard time doing spiritual work, it means you're making great progress, you know, because you're really... Um, putting the ego under threat and allowing yourself to allow things without backing down into thinking and addiction and all those uh, other payoffs of the ego. Okay, so uh, I'll stop there.